animals and humans have shared the world for as far back as we can remember. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's been an equal or kind world for animals. While we're making positive progress in some areas, there is still a long way for humans to go when it comes to respect, equality, and kindness towards our animal counterparts. Here on The Pet Project, we advocate for animal welfare, and we try and raise awareness for better animal care. Our season two kicks off with an incredible horse rescue by the Horse Sanctuary Fiji team. Oh, by the way, this is Honey. Hey, Honey, she's a rescue. When we think of horses, the word majestic comes to mind. The term horsepower did not come from nothing. Horses are an animal of wonder, built like machines, stronger than most, and yet they come as humble as a puppy. Did you know horses are highly intelligent animals? They can be taught many different tasks through positive reinforcement and clicker training just as dogs can. One study showed that horses have the ability to communicate their needs to their guardians. These horses learn to communicate whether they wanted a blanket on or off through touching symbols on a board. Well, I want to show you how it works and put it to good use. I'm going to tie the handkerchief around his leg. We'll count to three and Nugget will untie it for us. Show him how this works. Nugget, hey, pay attention on the count of three. One, two, oh. hey! There we have it. Well, you know what? That went so well. I'm going to do an even harder trick. I'm going to tie it around his hind leg. We'll count to three again and see if he can untie it. All right, Nugget, show him how it works. Pay hey, close attention. One, two, three. Right there. Just roll him out there. He's ready oh, to go. Seven. <laughs> You've done that before, haven't you? A couple you? times. That was, the high, that was as high as you can get right there with 12. You got it? Six and six, Nugget. You got that? Six and six. You got it? Well, okay, he's ready. Here we go. We're going to add six and six. Hey, Nugget, we're right over here. Go ahead. Six and six. You right? Whoa! I love being on a roll. I'm doing die. Ah, uh. oh, four and a three. Four and a three again. That's well, when okay. you're hot, you're hot. What that's, can you do? That's okay. We're going to do four takeaway three. This can be hard oh. for Nugget because he gets going when he counts. So now pay close attention. Four takeaway three. You got it? He says he has it. Not going to make a mistake? Huh? Okay. Oh my God. Four takeaway three. Here we go. Hey! Woo! That was excellent. Now you'd assume basic horse care knowledge would be a given, considering horses are living creatures just like us, and they require their basic needs to be met just like us. But sadly, this is not the case in our country. Sadly, this was the case for Penny. As you can see, Penny is missing an eye. So Marika Hunter and her team here at the Horse Sanctuary Fiji have come together. They started this three years ago, and they've tried their best to help and save as many neglected horses in the country as they possibly can. And today, we're gonna meet them. So I started this about um, three years ago with my daughter. Um, we start, we got one or two horses and then we realized there were so many that were neglected, but um, so then we actually started a sanctuary. Um, but prior to that, like growing up, I grew up in Savasavu. I've always had horses, but I've also also seen the way we treat them. Uh, I had horses in Nandi as well. Uh, I lived in Latoka. I used to ride my horse to St. Thomas School. <laughs> um, um, but again, you know, you're just exposed to a lot of uh, things that we could do better in Fiji uh, and a lot of it is really just comes down to the basics Because they're such big animals people automatically assume that uh, you have to be tough with them. You have to be rough with them um, so it's kind of trying to Change that in Fiji and make people aware of the basics and how to treat them and um, How to be gentle and uh, so the sanctuary is based on that uh, we work with the team in New Zealand 
who send us pre-loved equipment so we're able to go into the communities and give them bits and bridles and just make sure that the horses that they're using um, are as healthy as can be. Uh, we have flyers in Itoke, um, Hindi and English that we give uh, just around the basics of care like give them water every day, uh, move them, check on them in the morning and the evening so you don't get a rope burn like the one that you've just seen that we've rescued today. Um, you know, just a lot of the basics. Don't ride them too young. So that's kind of what uh, the sanctuary is about. And all of our horses, you know, we make it so that they, they we, we try and so they don't kick, so they're calm around kids. But when he first came, he would kick, he would bite, um, he was skin and bone. So this just shows like, you know, this is what rehabilitation does and just looking after them, giving them water, making sure they're in the shade, they have good food, like grass, change them. And, and then you'll have horses that look like this, big and strong. Yes. And they want to eat your hand. Oh, gee. Oh, he just, he, wow. He's a good boy. Look at how big Chief is compared to me. And, and also like with horses, you should be able to lift their legs. So for us, when they come, at first they kick and they bite, but eventually we get them to a point where you can lift their legs so you can check their hooves. Yeah. Um, you know, the back legs, again, you want to be able to check their hooves, make sure they're clean, there's no injuries. These are all just the basics, but you shouldn't do it unless your horse, you know, it takes a lot of time to get them to where you can lift their back legs up and they won't kick you. Um, but these are just some of the things that owners can do. Start to get your horse used to lifting its legs so you can check them, clean them. If they have an injury on the back leg, you can help, um, you know, and, and, and work with them. Yeah. Are there any tricks to how you can teach them to stop kicking? You know, it's trust. Uh, the minute the horses are scared, like horses are flight animals, they're not fighting animals, so they will want to run away or reach out or kick or bite to run away from you if they're mistreated. So it's really getting them to trust you and know that you're not gonna hurt them and then you slowly just work your way around their back and their back legs and, um, and it's just trust. Now you may have also come across some horses that have sunken backs. It doesn't exactly look right. So could it be a genetic problem or could it be the result of human mishandling? Morika tells us more. The sunken backs are all just being trained too young. I mean, people can say all oh, the horses born that way. It's definitely not. There's no, no horse in the world is born that way. Uh, we ride them too young. We put too much uh, heavy gear on them. Uh, and you'll see sometimes a little horse with a big guy and then a big sack of cassava. And it's a, probably a year and a half, two year old horse. So. That's just too heavy, so over time the back will start to sway. Their bones just aren't strong enough. Um, so riding too young in Fiji is a big thing because we're quite impatient. We want the horse to ha start helping in the agriculture and transport, but really if you just wait, they'll be that much better, that much stronger and live much longer. Did you know you can estimate a horse's age by looking at their teeth? That's right, the angle formed by the meeting of the upper and lower incisor teeth as shown in this chart can give you an indication of a horse's age. Cool, huh? Coming up next, we'll learn about basic horse care and how the community have stepped in to help the horse sanctuary Fiji by adopting their horses, something you can be a part of too. Penny, we got about three years ago, and she, we had to have one eye removed. The other eye is not doing well either. Um, you know, and the main thing with white horses in Fiji, they get really uh, sunburned. So it's really important you put them in the shade. Um, but we're not sure exactly how, how her eye uh, got so injured that it had to be removed. But we were lucky we had some um, overseas vets here who were able to, uh, working with the ministry, so we had them come and help us remove her eye. Um, so she's one eye. You can see here that eye. Oh, nice. it's up. Oh, focus, focus, focus. There you go. So she's got one eye, and this other one is not doing too well. So we treat it um, every day. We clean it out and wash it and her ear, because just susceptible to sun and problems. But we're just trying to keep her as 
comfortable as possible and um, you know give her a really normal life but um, you know she's very very hard to keep because she needs so much care every single day but we're but she's a trooper she's a good fighter this one I think one of the biggest things is just people don't give them water um, uh, you know, when we had the, uh, when they had the Sambeto races, they had vets there, which is fantastic. It's something that Kim Beto's, Mark McElrath and the team are doing so that the horses have to pass the vet check. I think about 85% of the horses were dehydrated, so they wouldn't let them race until they rehydrated. And just teaching them that, like this is, your horse is dehydrated, like people weren't aware of it. So, you know, in the West, it's a lot hotter. They can't just drink from puddles. You actually need to take them to a creek, a river, or get a bucket, or get your well water and put it in a basin and give it to the horse. Um, that alone will just uh, help a lot of their conditioning. Because a lot of horses, they can get good grass, but if they're dehydrated, it's gonna be so hard for them to stay and look healthy. Here are some tips for basic horse care. Check on your horse at least twice a day. Make sure grazing is free of danger and poisonous plants. Have regular health checks at the vet. Make sure they have suitable living conditions and are kept safe and clean. Always have fresh water available. So how did this come about that you, um, well, you've sponsored uh, one of the horses? Yeah. Uh, it came about through Morika Hunter. Yeah, she's got a sanctuary over here for horses who are injured or not looked after and all that. So she brings them across and then she asked for sponsors, so my granddaughter sponsored one. And uh, so we come every weekend and uh, give them a bath, feed them a few things like carrots and cassavas and kula, kumana and things of that nature that they like. And uh, yeah, get a good ride. We go up to the river bank and come back from there. So the horses get to know people, people who are nice to them, and, and, and we get to know horses also. So it's a, it's a win-win situation. What we found is that my daughter and I couldn't uh, look after 16 horses all on our own and we have our team here, the staff that, that we pay that help us. Um, but they need the extra love, the extra TLC, so we had an open day where we just invited people to come and have a look at what we do. So it's a must if you're riding, you have to pick a helmet. All right, so you guys have the helmet? Yeah, we have everything. Cool, you have everything. Brilliant. Um, this is the uh, medical stuff. And leg yeah. wraps and yeah. coconut oil, really yeah. good for their skin and okay. just, uh, also antifungal. Yeah. Um, this are the saddles, all here. Um, so there's two kid saddles. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. These two saddles that are kid saddles. Oh, perfect. So this is something like over time. I just you have been collecting to... over like yeah. how many years. Yeah, nice. Um, and then we um, have all the pads. And then this back here is stuff that comes from New Zealand, so it's pre-loved. And what we do with all of this, there's uh, saddles and bridles and halters, is we go into the villages and settlements and we find uh, the horse owners and we refit them with proper bridles and bits. And occasionally we give them a saddle, but not often, because okay. what we find is that we'll remove the pad, and the horses have more injuries from the saddle. So basically we give a pad and a bridle. Okay. Um, and then through that we had a lot of interest. People like Ava, her family were like, oh, how can, can we adopt a horse and have this be like our horse? Because they don't have a field, they don't have the equipment, they don't have uh, the skills to keep uh, or a place to keep the horse. So what we do now is that we have certain horses, about six or seven that are adopted. The pe their, their families come and visit them pretty much every weekend uh, or during the week. They give them extra TLC. Um, they develop a bond with them. Some can be ridden, so they ride them. Some can't be ridden because they're so injured, like previously have been injured. Um, so they walk them down to the river or they'll just groom them. And the horses love it. So that's just something that's really evolved naturally and works really, really well. Is this something that the, our viewers watching can also be a part of? Yeah, they can uh, get in touch with the Sanctuary, uh, the uh, Horse uh, Sanctuary uh, web uh, Facebook page. Uh, they can message us uh, if they're interested in something like that and uh, we can you know try and match them up with a horse if they're interested um, or at certain days we can have people come and visit we kind of limit it sometimes because of just liability um, you know horses are big animals we don't want too many kids running around them our horses 
are really well trained, but still you might have someone scare them. Um, but yeah, they can contact us through our Facebook page or Instagram, and then we can go from there. Meet Ava's horse, Boomer. Ava and her family have adopted Boomer and often come around to the sanctuary to feed, bathe, and take her down to the river. She is two years old. Yeah. And oops, she's always very hungry. <laughs> Ava's granddad says the kids love visiting their horse and is encouraging others to adopt a horse too. I find that um, coming over here, being with them and uh, spending time, uh, it's, a, it's a good way of uh, relaxing as well as getting to know people. Mm -hmm. I've met you and uh, yeah, it's a commitment that you otherwise naturally do not have. So that's Joski. Um, He's sort of this wise old, well he's not that old, um, wise, just gentle guy. Um, he came off the racetrack. Um, so a lot of the horses, once they're done with racing, they sort of get tossed aside. So we were lucky we, we bought him and then we brought him to the sanctuary. This is a bitless. So there's ones with bits and Joski normally gets the one without bits. Because he's normally. Um, so it depends on the horse. Yeah. Uh, some of them are hard to get away from feeding, so you need the bit to give you an, a, a bit more control. Joski is relatively okay. Sometimes he's stubborn, but um, he's really used to a bit less, so I just ride a bit less with him. And then you've got to check at the bottom if it's not all like this, otherwise it's very uncomfortable. Did you know a horse bit is a piece of metal or synthetic material that fits inside a horse's mouth and aids in the communication between the horse and the rider via the reins? Uh, that's Chief. He's, he's kind of my baby. <laughs> um, I saw him on my birthday uh, about two and a half years ago in Natandola Beach. He had this huge Russian guy on him. He was skin and bone. Um, he could barely hold his head up. And I walked up to him because he's such a big horse, like tall. And I thought, wow, look at this poor old horse. And he was skin and bone. Uh, and then I actually opened his mouth and looked at his teeth because that's how you can tell how old they are. And I realized he hadn't even got his five-year-old teeth. So he was like three and a half, uh, not even four. Um, and I was shocked because he was so worn out. He had a huge gash on his back. I took the saddle off, had a look at him. Uh, it took me a month to negotiate with the owner and then I eventually bought him. Um, and now the best thing is like he's completely transformed. He looks like he's from overseas. When I take photos of him to the guys at Natandola now, they can't believe it's the same horse. And they're like, oh, it's overseas, overseas horse. And it's like, no, it's not. It's a local horse, but this is what happens when you look after them. Um, you know, Natandola, we really need to make sure we've got water for them. We need to make sure we don't ride them too much, you know, that they're looked after, that they have grass when they're finished their day of riding. You know, just some of those care. And so we're working with that team and we've given them bridles and some saddles to help them. Uh, but you know, it's it's only like a drop in the ocean. Um, and then we've uh, got Honey, who's around here somewhere. We picked up on the side of the road. Honestly, a walking skeleton. She has hip injuries, so she'll never be able to be ridden. Um, she looks skinny right now, but she's actually gained probably double her weight. Um, and uh, she's just a beautiful, beautiful girl too. Now coming up after the break, an amazing horse rescue mission in Singatoka. Today. So we're about to start our res rescue. We're just uh, we've latched the trailer to the truck, and now we are, will be heading towards Singatoka to pick up this uh, poor horse that needs uh, a lot of help. And uh, hopefully we'll get her in okay, and um, it won't be too much of a struggle. And then we'll bring her back to the sanctuary, and we'll start treating her and hopefully get her on the path to rehabilitation. But we've got the team here, and uh, we've got bridles as well. We've got information sheets about basic horse care. So that's part of what we do as well as we give out information, we refit bits, we give out some bridles to the community of horse owners, just so we can hopefully improve the standard of horse care.
My team and I followed the Horse Sanctuary Fiji team to their rescue destination, not knowing just how bad the poor horse's situation actually was. By the time we arrived, the team had already helped the injured horse onto the trailer. The situation was worse than we imagined. Lady the Horse had been suffering a rope burn injury for almost two years, to the point that maggots had started infesting her leg. Lady's owners had tried to help her through natural remedies, which didn't exactly work. But luckily for Lady, they realized she would be better off in the hands of an actual vet and recover safely at the sanctuary. Uh, we have um, like a rope injury around the um, horse leg. So it has been infected over time and uh, we've been trying our best to, uh, to heal it, but no avail like so we seek the help of uh, these guys to come in and take care of the horse because we just been worried about the horse life and safety. Yeah, we tried uh, different herbal medicines to cure for the horse, but since it doesn't work, so uh, we feel relieved that uh, we have professionals to yeah. take care of the job. This one, the swelling is really huge. And, and the, she still has the, the cut there. Yeah. But if you consider that maybe this has been going on for two years, that's what they said that the, the initial injury was two years ago. And they, they tried to, they went to the vet, they bathed her and everything, but they said by the time, because somebody borrowed the horse yeah. in the, to, for the plantation, and when they brought the horse back, it was already, um, there was already pus coming out and stuff. So they, they tried, but, they were. They had to go buy the, the um, products and stuff. So it's really hard for people huh? because. Um, so, but if you consider, like you look at the rest of the horse, and then she's got that injury, yeah. any human being would be <laughs> would probably be dead by now. Yeah. Right? So it's amazing that con the rest of her body, the condition it's in, you know, it just shows you how resilient they are. Huh? So now we've luckily we've loaded her. Uh, we can see the wounds a lot worse than what we had expected, so that's not good. Um, we purchased the horse with the owner so that, you know, if something does happen to her, she doesn't make it or whatever, it's the liability is on us. Um, so now we're going to head back to the sanctuary. We have her really secured in the, in the um, trailer. We also have put some betadine antiseptic on her leg just so, you know, we can start at least the process. And um, we're gonna head back to the sanctuary, hopefully get over all those humps with no problem and up the hills. Was it, um, was it difficult trying to get the horse off them? Uh, no, they're, they're actually really good owners in the sense that they realized she needed the help. Um, you know, so they were okay to let her go, mm. which we're really, really grateful for. They realized out here and the condition she's in right now, it's beyond anything uh, you could do with just the herbal treatments. And that's what we recommend. Like this is a rope burn. It didn't have to get like this. You know, that's why it's so important with people in Fiji, if you're tying your horse, which we all pretty much do, morning, afternoon, check it. Does it have a rope burn? Is the rope tangled around the leg? Take it off. If it is and you live by the sea, put it in the ocean. Let that help clean it. If you don't live by the ocean, try and wash it with just a bucket of water and then use the bat bat koro, laia laia, you know, whatever you've got, the herbal medicines you use for yourself you can use on your horse. So that's really key is that, you know, you start using those medicines on the horses too. Join us on the show next week to find out more on Lady's journey. Did she make it to the sanctuary safely? And will she ever recover? All that and more next week. To all the horse owners, you're lucky that uh, you even have um, something to carry your load and say your load. So please do take care of your horses. Naka.